Hello. Thank you for joining us today. This is Political Forum for Wednesday, May 15, 2013. We welcome today as our guest, the one and only Alderman Howard Brookings, Jr. of the 21st Ward. Thank you so much for appearing on oh, the show. Oh, thanks for having me again. Thank you so much. Always great to have you here. And I'm Ali Kaba, a board member here at Can TV. Uh, this is a live interactive uh, program which comes to you as a community service by Can TV. And uh, we welcome your questions and comments for Alderman Brookings today. And uh, you can call us at the number 312-738-1060. Feel free to call us at any time during the next 25 minutes. We'll try to get as many voices on as possible. Thank you again. And uh, let's get to it. First of all, I know there's been some changes in the uh, boundaries of words, and right. people may not know the 21st word. So uh, just describe to us the 21st word. Our new boundaries, it didn't change much except that I will no longer go past 99th Street. And so my general war boundaries will be 99th Street on the south, 79th Street on the north, the Dan Ryan on the east, and I go as far uh, west as Damon. So the new area essentially that I picked up is the area between 83rd Street and 87th Street, Ashland and Damon. And pretty much the rest of the boundaries uh, remain the same, except the, the part that I lost uh, south of 99th Street. Right. And uh, in fact, as you can see, that's the map there. Uh, of the, the old uh, map. Exactly, the old map there and slight changes there, you know, in it. And uh, let's get to it. You know, I know that uh, you are very much interested in the community development, economic empowerment, and one program that you've been working on that is so successful really is the Rental Car Business Opportunity Symposium. Uh, what is that? Well, the uh, Chicago Automatic Black Caucus uh, negotiated a deal where the rental car agencies will spend roughly $30 million a year, new, sp new money, uh, with African-American and minority uh, vendors. And uh, we would welcome anyone uh, who has a business out there to show up at our symposium on May 20th at uh, 3 o'clock from 3 to uh, 7 p.m. at the Parkway Ballroom located at 4455 South King Drive. If you can provide a service uh, or a product to the rental car uh, agencies, then we want you to show up and participate in this uh, symposium. And that can be kind of anything. So whether you uh, have oils or fluids or windshield wipers, whether you're in the professional services, you are uh, an accountant or a lawyer, uh, whether you can detail cars, whether you have an auto body shop, whether you can sell them cars, uh, all of those and kind of almost anything that you can imagine that deals with that industry, please come out. Uh, you know, this money is available for you. Uh, local people in the Chicago area who are minority women uh, own businesses, we want you to come out and partake in this. This is a, a great opportunity. Never before did the rental car companies uh, participate in the minority set-aside program. And so now uh, we were able to negotiate that, and we're really excited about that. This should uh, really jumpstart some businesses out there. Yeah, it sounds really great. Again, it's on May 20th, 2013, uh, from 3 to 7 p.m., and if you are interested, please, you know, be there, shop, and this is a great opportunity. Now, I've been told by my quote-unquote handlers to make sure people understand this is not a job fair. Yeah. Uh, only if you have a business, if you can provide a good or a service to this industry, yeah. we want you to come out. That's right. Again, it's 4455 South uh, King Drive. Correct. So keep that, please, in mind. And uh, the other hot issue out there, as you know, is the anxiety caused by school closings, you know, and uh, you've been really uh, on top of that issue. And so what's really the latest on that front? Well, the latest is that the hearing officer recommended that uh, 14 out of the 54 schools, I think it, it was initially, mm -hmm. that they slated to close, uh, remain open. There's a hearing coming up uh, next week uh, regarding that. And uh, in my ward, there are two schools that were initially slated to close. That was Garrett A. Morgan and Mahalia Jackson. 
the hearing officer recommended that both of those schools stay open. So if you're if you're interested in school closings, uh, if you're interested in, in keeping a particular school open, I would encourage you to go to the board meeting. And I believe the board meeting is on the 22nd of May, but I, I'm not certain of, of that meeting. Great. And uh, we have our first caller on the line. Caller, you're on. Hi. Yes, hello. Good evening, Alderman. I have a question for you. What is uh, your take on the uh, administration, uh, Mayor Emanuel's administration, looking at changing the uh, retirement benefits for city workers? You know, my take has been kind of consistent that people went into government service and at at the time many of our employees went there where government service did not pay as much as the private sector. I believe that they should get the benefit of their bargain. Uh, Now, if they want to change the benefits for new employees, that's something different. They know that going in. And so that's essentially my take. Right. Thank you so much, caller, for that, you know, and I'm so glad that the issue came up, up up front because I know that there's a lot of being, a lot of conversation around that and connecting it to Obamacare. Right. You know, right. Uh, and, 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 you know, people kind of relied on that. I, th- I think that that's um, unfair if you change the rules in the middle of the game. I understand that the city is uh, cash strapped, but um, people should get the benefit of their bargain. Yeah. Sounds fair to me. And uh, again, uh, talking about this uh, another issue, uh, which is the parking meters stuff right. out there, right? <laughs> <laughs> From cl- school closings to parking meters, you know, uh, what 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 what's going on there? And, well, uh, Mayor Emanuel there? has negotiated a uh, or, or, or entered into negotiations regarding the parking meters. As you know, the the parking meter company gave the city uh, one billion dollars up front and agreed to this seventy five year lease. Before they took over, the city of Chicago was only receiving roughly $20 million a year in revenue. Uh, since the parking meter company took over, uh, they've been receiving roughly $100 million a year. Um, some of the uh, problems and, and give backs, I think is what they're calling it. Um, if the city of Chicago closes a street for whatever the reason, they're filming, uh, there's a water main break, there's a parade, we have to replace that missed revenue to the company. And so what uh, Mayor Emanuel administration has done is to negotiate with them regarding some of those give backs and also in ex- so we don't have to pay. And, and many callers know that uh, they submitted the city a bill for $61 uh, million. Mm-hmm. And going forward, some have estimated that uh, throughout the life of this contract, we would essentially end up giving back uh, to the company almost a billion dollars, the money that we actually have received from them. Um, so in, ex- in exchange uh, for them releasing us out of that particular clause in the contract, what uh, the mayor has negotiated is uh, a longer hours in the central loop area mm-hmm. and also free parking on Sundays uh, outside of the central loop area. Um, right now you have to feed the meters uh, seven days a week yeah. and even on uh, major holidays. Mm-hmm. We used to not pay parking meters on Christmas and Thanksgiving and 4th of July, etc. And so in my community, for example, uh, many people go to church on Sunday, but either before they go to church, they go to breakfast, they go to lunch, they go to brunch, they venture out into the other neighborhoods. It could be a potential win for uh, people. Uh, I do understand my my colleague, Brendan Riley, where some people who live actually in the central uh, loop area it could be a, a hardship, but we would have to balance those two hardships and the cost and the benefits of each. Right, you know, and that's why you get to make those decisions. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and uh, you are watching. Somebody's going to be mad <laughs> regardless sure. of what and decision that's right, we make. You know, that's right. And you're watching Political Forum, a community service of Can TV. I'm Ali Kaba, a board member here at Can TV. This is a live interactive show, and if you have any questions, please call us at 312-738-1060. Uh, we have a caller on the line right now. Caller, you're on. Hi. Hi, thanks for taking my phone call. Uh-huh. Um, I was just curious, are there going to be any summer park activities for the youth on the south side? 
Yes, uh, that's been an initiative of Mayor Emanuel, and and I can't point to any specifics. I don't have kind of a flyer, but yes, there will be uh, activities for youth throughout the city of Chicago, including the South Side. And you know, we're really excited. I I think that uh, my grandmother used to say that a uh, idle mind is the devil's workshop, mm. and so we need to keep these young people engaged throughout the summer, uh, and hopefully keep them safe. Right. Thank you, caller. We have another caller on the line. Caller? Hi, um, I know the construction of the red lines can be starting up pretty soon. Right. Um, how are how are people supposed to deal with that? I mean, obviously, if you take the red line up, I mean, there are going to be, like, buses to go around. And what are sort of the ultimate goals for all that construction? Well, yes, there will be shuttle buses at 95th Street taking and, and other locations, but taking you uh, directly to 55th Street. Uh, there will be no charge uh, at 55th Street, um, and it's anticipated that this will last for uh, five months. Now, the ultimate goal is when they're completed is one, we'll get some new stations out of it, and that would be great. Uh, ingress and egress at 95th Street can be hectic. Um, but another good thing is that you'll be able to get home and get to work 20 minutes faster. So you can either get an extra 20 minutes of sleep in the morning and you can have an extra 20 minutes to, to do your kids' homework in, in the evening. And so we think that this would be a win-win for the community. Uh, I'm a uh, firm believer that we just do this in the five months as opposed to uh, do, stretching it out over five years, they would say, if we only did it on weekends. But the other unique thing about the red line is that the red line is the most utilized uh, line on the weekend. So it would uh, essentially affect 14,000 uh, riders if you only shut it down on Saturdays and Sundays. And so I think that the, the, the cost and the benefits, the, the, the benefits uh, of doing it all at one fell swoop outweigh the cost of, of, of trying to stretch it out over the five-year period with the least interruption to the uh, general public. All right. Thank you, caller, for that, you know. And again, talking about uh, expansions, and uh, we had recently about the McCormick Place expansion as part of the same development, you know. No, I, and I, I heard that that was a, a, a new twist that the mayor threw out with respect to... Um, the DePaul Blue Demons coming near the McCormick Place, and and I listened to um, some of the discussion on WTTW la last night. Although it was only one person that showed up, mm -hmm. uh, I I don't know um, how that benefits the the city at at large. Uh, clearly, when you're building stuff, the economic development surrounding it, uh, especially with two hotels, seems like a win for the city. Uh, but the devil's in the details with respect to that proposal. Um, it, it seems sound, but, you know, who knows? And maybe DePaul will start winning again. I, I don't know that they had a bunch of a buzz since uh, Mark Aguirre was at uh, DePaul. That's right. And uh, we have another caller on the line. Caller, you're on. Hi. Thank you very much for taking my call. Yeah. Um, I saw the other night on the news that Alderman Riley is proposing buying the parking meters back all together because they're making a great deal of money and, you know, their rates are just very expensive for Chicagoans. So I wanted just a few more details about sort of where the council stands, you know, where the mayor stands, and whether or not you foresee something like that happening. I'm not sure that it will happen or, or that it can happen. Uh, two things. We'd have to come up with the billion-plus dollars to get out of the contract, uh, number one. To the extent that we came up with that type of money, we wouldn't be able to decrease the rates because I assume that we would use the money uh, from the parking meters to uh, to bond that revenue from the parking meters in order to pay back the money that we would have to pay to get out of the uh, contract. Another thing that uh, cities uh, and the mayor would be looking at is that what does that say for other contracts? And would that cost us additional revenues if they knew that the city would get out of contracts that they just absolutely don't like? Uh, I understand that the, the public sentiment regarding the parking meters, and I, I share that sentiment. Um, I, I note that I have really no parking meters in the 21st Ward to speak of. I think they're literally four meters, 
and uh, there's plenty of free parking so that people don't even park uh, on those meters uh, in the 21st Ward. But I, I don't know where that is going, and I would like to uh, hear all of the details with respect uh, that, that Alderman Riley has come up with respect to that. Thank you so much, Carla, for, for that call. And uh, really, going back to this uh, school closings, uh, what's the situation in the 21st Ward? You know, are you affected by it, and what does it really yeah, mean we, for we, the families? We have um, two schools that are scheduled to close. One is uh, Mahalia Jackson, and Mahalia Jackson has really done some uh, unique things there. They uh, have developed a niche, and they essentially become a gifted program for the deaf and hard of hearing. Uh, they have several full-time uh, teachers there that sign. They have uh, a lot of their uh, support staff that sign, not just someone that comes in, you know, once in a while. They set up the school uh, with with carpet and, 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 and whiteboards, and they have elevators, and they have uh, uh, central air conditioning. So they've really done a lot of stuff at that particular school. Uh, and we would hope that, that Garrett Morgan uh, and Mahalia Jackson would stay open. Now, the other school is Garrett A. Morgan, and, and they, too, have a significant uh, special need population. They, too, have an elevator, and it is somewhat of a newer building. Uh, those are the two schools that uh, the hearing officer, uh, former federal judge David Corr, ruled that um, did not meet the criteria and recommended to the board uh, that they should remain open. Um, we don't know what is going to happen when the full board takes this uh, issue up, whether they will disregard the hearing officer's uh, recommendation or not. We would hope not, uh, and you know we will be there in support of those two schools remaining open. I think that's definitely something that will sound really great to the families in, yes. in the world. You know? uh, especially those, um, you know, I've heard from a lot of parents who uh, kids have special needs, and they said that their kids had been in several schools before yeah. they went to either one of those two schools and that those children were thriving at those particular institutions. So it would be a, a hardship for those families. Right. And we have another caller on the line. Caller, you're on. Hi, Alderman. Hi. Um, I don't live in your ward, but I've heard about so many different businesses, like the Walmart and all these, and I and I just heard that there was a new um, gym opening up. Right. And I want to know, it seems like you've been very successful in bringing businesses into the community. What is your secret or what can you share with your colleagues on the west side um, to kind of bring some businesses over to the west side? Well. It, it, we've been fighting this issue as a caucus, and we'll, and business begets business. And so for a long time, I was here fighting to get Walmart. The driver of a lot of those businesses in my community was Walmart being the anchor store because they know that people are going to shop at Walmart uh, and be driven to that particular area. But, you know, with that said, there are other businesses that refuse to come to African-American communities, and we've enlisted the mayor to help us uh, essentially bully or push or cajole or shame some of those businesses to come to our neighborhoods. A prime example of that is Red Lobster and the Darden Group of Restaurants. Um, it, it's a shame that you can go to any Red Lobster in the suburbs, or the only or the ones in the city and see a, a, a large number of African American clientele patronizing their particular business, but they won't locate within our uh, boundaries. And so we've enlisted him. We've talked to planning regarding that. Uh, but a lot of the success of, of bringing business is having the land available for those businesses to locate. Emma Mitz has done a great job with respect to her Walmart, and that whole area has blossomed uh, once um, that shopping center came there. But I think that there could be more successes out there, and we're going to continue to push to get uh, businesses and other industries. I, I told the mayor, it, not just shopping centers, but we want uh, other businesses that actually employ the residents of our individual wards, whether they're call centers, uh, etc. And, you know, went on to give me an example of, for example, um, United Airlines. Um, 
why can't a business like that locate on the south or the west side? If we're going to give you $18 million in TIF money, uh, clearly some of these businesses, it doesn't, they don't have to locate in the central business area to do what it is, is that is their core mission. And so I, I think we're all working and pushing. Uh, progress is just slow with respect to that. Thank you so much, Carla. Uh, that's really important. And I was really going to ask you about that because when you look at uh, the kind of businesses that you're attracting in the world today, it, it says a lot about your vision for, for right. the world, you know. But, it, and it also says, uh, one of the other things, though, is that we have a responsibility of residents also to do what we can. Uh, if you have an idea, if you if you've driven by an empty storefront for years and you have an idea for a business in we implore you to invest in our community also uh it is not just somebody else's responsibility it's all our responsibility to try to make our neighborhood and our communities better um, i met with ed gardner who's been uh, out protesting several work sites and you know one of the things that he hadn't thought about i said mr gardner you're a man of significant means and business acumen. Uh, we need your help also. You have a vision and you have friends with significant uh, amounts of, of resources. Why can't you convince them also as opposed to begging Menards to come to our community mm -hmm. and hire uh, local people? Why can't you convince them to invest in our community? Mm -hmm. And so it's a different thinking and we're working with respect to that, mm -hmm. but we need to change the mindset uh, with respect to our community and it's everybody's part uh, and individuals can do it. it it may be a house on your block uh, that's abandoned and a lot of these houses are going for cheap if yeah. you can afford to buy a new car yeah. you can afford to buy these houses mm -hmm. it's nothing wrong with you buying the house and and you screening a tenant uh, or you rehabbing it and selling it and i think that that is what makes communities and neighborhoods great yeah, that's very true. I agree with you, you know. And uh, specifically, you know, since uh, all politics is local there, uh, is it possible for you to help to install um, speed bumps in the areas like near schools at 88 and Wallace? The short answer is yes. Okay. And uh, what we do need or what we would ask is that um, your, you get a petition signed by your neighbors. And the reason we do that is, some people detest speed humps, and we've had several occasions where we have installed speed humps, mm -hmm. and then an angry mob came in saying, we don't like speed humps, take them up, or literally ran out there and stopped the people as they were putting the speed humps down. And so just to alert the, the community that the speed humps are coming, uh, we just ask that you do a petition regarding that, and yes, we'll absolutely put speed humps in. Right, and uh, we are actually just at uh, the tail end of our show, Donald Devon Brokens. <laughs> are there any final comments you'd like to Well, make? certainly, and the one the caller alluded to it, and that is we do have a new business coming to the, uh, that has had a grand opening yesterday, and that is the Planet Fitness on 83rd and Stewart. Uh, we have slated later this summer for Chase Bank to be located there and a private hotel. We're also excited about our, our Reverend Jenkins' legacy project that is coming to the old Soft Sheen Carson L'Oreal building. But more importantly, more importantly, and I would be remiss if I didn't keep repeating this, please show up at the Parkway yeah. Ballroom. If you have a business and you can provide a service to the car rental industry, there's $30 million of new money set aside for minority, African American and minority and women owned businesses to do business with them and literally the, the your only your imagination uh, would stop you as to know which particular businesses uh, could participate in this great and uh, for our viewers again here's the office contact information for all them and brokens so you can see it the office is located at 9011 at uh, South Ashland and you can call him at that number 773-881 9300 again 773 thanks and uh last but not least yes uh we have a town hall meeting slated for this saturday at the woodson library 95th and halsted 9 30 a.m uh please show up 
Uh, you don't have to live in my ward. There'll be great information uh, that will be germane to anybody who lives anywhere in the city of Chicago. Okay. Well, uh, all Devin Brokens, thank you so much for joining Thanks us for today. Me. And I want to thank our uh, technician here, Steve, for handling the phones today. And as always, Political Forum is brought to you as a community service by Can TV. And I'm really proud to be a board member here at Can TV. Please join us for another Political Forum next Wednesday. Thank you. And again... Thank, Thank you, you for joining us Thanks today. Thanks for having me. Okay.